what's this? A video on Friday? I don't upload videos on Friday. What's going on? Hey guys, and welcome back to a special uh, video here on our a la carte. Yeah, I don't usually upload videos on Fridays. Videos come on Saturdays, Mondays, and Wednesdays. But for the month of February, I'm trying something new. February Friday vlogs. These are going to be special videos that are going to break from my traditional art tutorial videos and spend a little more time letting you guys get to know who I am and answering some of your questions. And I have a I have a whole bunch of fun things planned. It's, it's gonna be fun. So I'm gonna be doing these every single Friday for the month of February. After the month of February, not certain. We're just trying it for February, see how that rolls. I have a whole bunch of fun ideas for each of these different videos. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. Click over on Mr. Turtle right there. He'll take you to the subscribe button so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. So the first video I decided to do was a question and answer video because I haven't done one in like two years or something. And you guys always ask such great questions. So I went ahead and put out on Facebook and my Instagram that I was doing this and you guys sent in a ton of questions and you guys even posted some questions to some of my um, YouTube videos. So I took all of those questions, which I got almost 100 questions, which was amazing. Unfortunately, I can't answer all 100 of those in one video. So what I decided to do is I'm going to answer a couple of them today. And then what I think I'm going to do is on the end of my tutorial videos, at the very end, I'm going to do a viewer question, um, just a quick little segment and just answer some of the really fun, quick question things. Blah. So make sure that you're watching to the end of the tutorial videos to see what the viewer question is. Let's get on to the first question. Actually, I got this question multiple times from lots of different people um, asking me my hobbies or things that I do that are not drawing, tutorial, YouTube related. Um, so yeah, I do have a few things. The funny thing is, is um, before this became my job, art used to be my hobby. It used to be the one thing I would go to and relax and just be able to enjoy. And I was always excited to get done with my work so that I could come home and draw. And now that drawing is my job, I still enjoy drawing as a hobby, um, but I have to find a balance because otherwise I'd be drawing nonstop all day long, which for practicing and improving purposes is awesome, but I don't want to burn out on art. So I really have had to pick up some new hobbies. And one that I absolutely adore is um, I love to sew. I love sewing things and creating little sewing projects and stuff. And it's something that I'm kind of just self-teaching myself as I go. I watch a lot of sewing YouTube videos <laughs> out there. This last Christmas, I bought my niece a doll. And I thought it would be so much fun if that doll had some extra clothes to play with so I began to sew this doll clothes and I thought I was just gonna make you know one or two different outfits for her to change her into and I think this doll has more clothes than I do now if I have some time free um, that's what I really enjoy doing I also enjoy uh, you know watching movies and, and stuff like that and eating and sleeping <laughs> great question because um, I was self-taught. When I was beginning to learn art, there wasn't a lot of teaching resources for me. There was not a lot of art schools um, where I was or that I could afford to go to. So most of my art knowledge is self-taught. As far as art books go, it really depends on what you want to do with your art. I mean, I could recommend a really good cartooning book or painting book or, you know, but it you would have to want to be doing cartooning or painting and things like that um, for that to really apply to you. Uh, what I really enjoy is getting um, other artists sketchbooks and just seeing what goes on in their brains and just watching and seeing how they sketch. And a lot of artists will sell their sketchbooks um, digitally so you can just download them and look at them on the computer. Um, or they, you can buy them in a hard copy where they actually get them printed. So those are the ones I really enjoy. I actually do have a huge bookshelf just full of art books that on all different topics. And if I had to choose one book that just was a really defining book from like made the biggest impression in my art journey would be this one. Let me go get it. So it'd be this book here by Lee Hammond is How to Draw Lifelike Portraits from Photographs. I don't do a lot of super hyper realistic drawings, but 
this book pushed me to do that, which was the very first push to do a style I hadn't tried. And this book was such a good success with me. It just took me through step by step on each of the features of the face. And I learned so much from this book. So this was one that just really, really helped me. Unfortunately, I cannot show you inside the book because of copyright reasons, but uh, you probably could go online and find a little review that would show you inside, but I can't show you inside. It's a question I'm still trying to answer for myself. Um, it hasn't actually been until about two years ago that I have decided to move into being a professional artist and trying to make a living on my uh, on just my art and not having a side job. Let me just say that there's two sides to being a professional artist. One is the actual art, being able to get your skill level up to um, being something that people are going to be wanting to purchase and um, that people can relate with. And that takes time and practice and, and dedication and a little time. It takes a lot of time. But that's the fun part, is that art journey. And I encourage anyone who wants to pursue art as a profession, if that's your, if that's your love, if sitting down at a table and drawing for hours and hours and hours, that just fills you with joy. That, that if you could think of anything in the world that you could do, sitting at a table and drawing pictures or painting or creating something with art just makes you excited and happy, then yes, pursue art as a profession. Um, but just know it's going to take hours and hours of practice and work and dedication to get your skill level to where it needs to be. The other side of being a professional artist is the business aspect. And this is the part that I am now just kind of figuring out. And that's the hard part, the money part. If I could find the perfect agent who would just say, you know, I'll really create whatever you want and, and I'll take care of all the business stuff, that would be awesome. So far, I haven't found that person. What I find helpful is talking to a lot of artists who um, have been down that road before and getting encouragement from them. But let me just give you this advice, and I get this advice from people who who ask me if um, they should start a YouTube channel and if they can be a full-time YouTuber. If you're just doing this for money, don't do it. Don't draw. Don't be a professional artist because you want to become rich and famous because you'll find that it's not worth being famous and rich, all the work that it's going to take. But if you do it because you love it, then it's worth all the work that it's going to be. So whatever you choose in life, whether it's an artist or a YouTuber or a doctor or a scientist, a teacher, a pilot, a professional model, whatever it is, if you do it because it makes your heart happy, not because you want to become a rich and famous person, but do it because you're, it makes you happy, then that that is when I say go for it. Follow your dreams. Well, I had three really big inspires in my very early childhood, like five, six, seven, eight years old. Um, one, of course, would be uh, Disney. I was really inspired by Disney. Now, not so much Walt Disney and not even so much the cartoons. I mean, I really enjoyed them. But as far as inspiring me, when I was probably about seven or eight, on the weekends, Disney, Walt Disney would put on a little uh, show or something on TV and the wonderful world of Disney. I don't know. Does anyone remember that? And when they did a uh, rerun with Walt Disney taking you through the animation studio back when they were working on Sleeping Beauty. I'm not that old, so it was a rerun. And he showed some of the animators actually creating the actual animation, the actual cartoon. And that was the first time I realized that cartoons didn't just magically appear, that there were people who got to make them. And, and I remember so vividly in my mind one of the artists painting the background for Sleeping Beauty and they individually painted the leaves on the bush. And I was just shocked that someone got to do that. And that began the my love of of finding out and 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 watching and and studying animators themselves the people themselves who create so as i got older i really began to research different animators reading books that they had written um reading biographies about them um interviews that they had 
collecting news clippings, all that kind of stuff. Um, because they just, those kind of people really, really inspired me. The second person that inspired me was an artist named Mark Kistler. And I really think it's because of him that I do what I do today. Because he, when I was a little kid on PBS, he would do a TV art show called Imagination Station. And he would just teach kids how to draw. And he did it in such a fun and carefree and and loving way. And he was encouraging. And you, you could send their artwork in and he would show it on his TV show. And, and he always made art fun. I thought, if I could do that, if I could do that, if I could make art that was fun for people to do and it wasn't scary uh, they could, you could just create fun worlds i want to do that and i always thought in the back of my mind that'd be so fun if if i could you know start my own tv show on pbs and and do that well so he was a huge inspiration for me not just as a kid but even through my adult life um, just showing the, the, the excitement for art that he had. The last person that super inspired me when I, to draw as a kid was Bob Ross. And he had also had a painting show on PBS, um, The Joy of Painting. And not that I've ever really ever gotten into oil painting. I don't, yeah, oils and I don't mix. I'm like water to the oil paint, we don't mix. But I loved Bob Ross teaching he had such a gentle spirit about him and just the way he talked and he, and not only did he paint this beautiful world on the canvas but he painted a beautiful world with his with his words i could sit even as a very young little girl i remember if bob ross was on i would sit i could watch hours and hours and hours of him i still to this day can, can watch him for hours and hours and hours and hours <music> Um, the ones I'm currently using right now, I did not find at an art store. I found actually at a store called Ross that we have here in the States. And it's a store that they don't always have the same things in. Um, it's just an overstock store. So other stores that get too much product, they'll sell it to Ross. And then Ross will sell it for a little bit discount. Um, so I found some there. Um, yeah, I, I don't have like an exact like a website that I go to. That's really not much of an answer, but... Maybe that's encouraging, though, to you, that you don't have to have this exact brand of sketchbook. Whatever your sketchbook looks like, that if it encourages you to draw on it, I don't care what it's made out of. You just, as long as you're drawing, that's the best thing. All right, so the last question is, it was just so funny. I laughed so hard when I read it. When I go to sleep, do I sleep with the door closed or open? And uh, definitely, when I read that question, the thought of it having a door being open while I'm sleeping just creeps me out. I never really thought about it before until I thought of the possibility of sleeping with my bedroom door open and that just creeps me out. So what about you? Do you guys sleep with your door open or do you sleep with your door closed? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, let me know if you enjoy these Friday vlogs. Um, obviously there is, they're a little bit different and it'll probably take you a couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, if this seems to be something that you guys overwhelmingly enjoy, I may consider extending it um, further on. I don't know if I'll do a, a weekly vlog or a bi week I don't know. We'll figure this out as we get closer. So these were just a small, minuscule part um, of the, the questions I got. Like I said, I got almost 100 questions asked, and all of them were amazing. There was quite a few that were duplicate, that people would ask the same question. Um, but some of them were super amazing questions and so much so that I didn't want to just throw them into a video with a whole bunch of other questions. So I thought, ah, this almost deserves its own video. Um, so I have a whole bunch of other questions that I'm going to be doing videos based on. And then again, for the rest of them, I am just going to do a viewer question at the end of each video. Um, so be checking those out from now on. Also, if you have a question that you would like to ask me, you can definitely leave those in the comment section below and I might use those for an upcoming viewer question or if I just get overwhelmed with a ton of questions, I might in a few months do another uh, question answer video. So, yay! Well, thank you guys for joining me today. Until next time, God bless you guys and we'll see you later. Bye-bye! I'm just coming in here and just getting in there really, really dark. And this is where you want to be really careful because if you accidentally bump your pencil and your pencil goes outside of your eyeball, um, you've just messed up your drawing.